All right, flex track basics. Basics of laying flex track. Now, check this out. As you can see here, my bench work is made up of four by fours and one by fours. Particle board and cork. I have to deal with extreme variations in both humidity and temperature. Now, you've been told, you've seen, or heard, you don't use particle board, right? See that? I'm here to tell you, that's not true. If you have to deal with extreme variation, particle board is the go-to stuff. It just is. Why? Because it can be trained. Particle board will stay where you screw it, regardless of, of conditions. Yeah, if you have it unsupported in places, it'll warp. If you're pouring a bunch of water down for your ballast and stuff, it will bubble. So don't do that. If you're using foam over plywood, this video is not for you. Because I use regular bulletin board cork. It's the cheapest cork you can buy over the top of particle board. And I use nails. I do not glue. If you are doing track work where you glue, this is not for you. This is for guys... Who are going to use nails nailed on your track work how do you do flex track then okay i got a nice flexible piece of flex track here somewhere over here i have a piece of flex track this thing is stiff it does not want to move how do you loosen it up hot water and dish soap that's how you loosen it up however flex track being three feet long is somewhat difficult to uh, do that I'll tell you right now how to do it. No joke. You take this in the shower with you. You shampoo it up. Hot water. You loosen it up and it'll be good to go. That's just the way it is. Deal with it. Unless you've got some kind of special three foot long bath you can put this thing in and keep the water heated. Just take it in the shower. Take it in the shower. Loosen it up. Soap and water does the trick and you'll be good to go. Now. How do you get flex track laid down just right? Okay, as you can see, can you see this here? That 90 degree? I'm going to cross that like I do with my 15 inch radius. But to cross that, I'm going to ultimately end up with something like this. We're going to be going over open space. When I got it on there, I will make underneath here a bridge. It will be awesome. It will be amazing. It will be cool. Whatever it will be, though, it will support the track so that it's a good, steady, nice, firm surface. Okay? So, I want to come off of this main. See if my switch is laid out? Those three are going to be the switches I use to come across here. To switch out. And to come across this 90 degrees right here. How am I going to do this? Alright. So I've got here a magnetic bowl. A bunch of push pins in it. I'm going to take this end here. And I'm going to pin it. Just like right through the hole. Just like that. Then. That's a mighty sharp curve, isn't it? It's probably going to come out over here. So let's back up. That means I'm going to need to pin this guy maybe over here. Let's say we pin him right here. Okay. And now, it's not going to come straight like this. Ken, I'm guessing right now we are looking at approximately 18 inches for a quarter curve. We could live with that, but I happen to know that it's going to come out over here and we're going to have a switch. We're going to have some switches. So let's say it's about this right. What I want to do then is because it's nice and flexible, I only want to pin the end of it. Okay, now I got it pinned. And I want to let that curve form naturally so I get a natural curve in there. Okay, I did I pinned one end, then I pinned the other end. Now this is roughed in. Okay, I'm going to have to connect my switches and stuff. Roughed in, as you can see here, i got an extra rail. 
sticking out. And because this track is nice and flexible, I'm going to push that right on through. Pin it. Allow it to form the natural curve. Once you form the natural curve, let's say, let's say this is exactly what I want. It isn't, but let's say that it was. I would nip this with my rail nipper, and then I would connect on whatever's going to be connected here. Let's say it was a switch of some sort. Okay. I will connect that on. In fact, that, I'm going to go the other way. I want to go, let's say I, I connect on something like this monster right here. I'll connect up to it, pin it, and then put the curve in, in its natural curve. The natural curve is the best curve. With the natural curve, then I will go ahead, and there are holes in here, and I will nail it. Then right here, it goes over open space, and I promise you there's going to be more than one track there. I'm going, to mil I'm going to build a bridge under here. This thing is in here. This thing is, this piece of bench work is in here solid. It is bolted. It is bolted to this piece, which is also 4x4s. Why do I use 4x4s? They are a theme throughout my entire place. I use 4x4s not just for my layout, but for other things. And... It's a theme, so I like 4x4s. 4x4s are easy. They stand on their own. They're cheap to get. They're easy to cut. That's why I use them. So now with the curve in here on the flex track, nice and easy, natural curve. It will naturally curve to its best radius. I can go ahead and I can put some track nails in there. I do not solder at the ends either. Not necessary. There's going to be a switch here. This switch happens to have holes in it, so I can nail it. All my rail joiners, I use the ox guard on those, and I do not solder them. Will I need feeder wires? Yes. Yes, I will. And on this one piece of track, I only need feeder wires either there or there. And I will put feeder wires on that piece of track. There will also be feeder wires on these switches, just in case. Switches are a tricky business. You want extra feeder wires. Even if, if there's a feeder wire here and here, I know that's totally redundant, but if it ain't a bunch of extra work for you, then just go ahead and do it. Because there's going to be a charge carried through this joint, possibly for decades. So I like to have feeder wires, especially, you see this rail right here? This rail here, I call the orphan rail. If it is not connected to power, then it is a dead piece of rail. So we need to connect to power. Now on this switch, I happen to have a wire to cross, so that this can't be a dead rail. But if you're not paying attention, this will end up being a dead rail. But that's it. Push pins on each end allow for the natural curve. When you have the natural curve in there, just lightly and carefully tap in your nails, and that's all it takes. That's all it takes to lay flex track. Do I need to super elevate? I do not need to super elevate because my layout is an industrial park. If you were doing high-speed trains and had a curve like this, you may want to super elevate. All you need to do is put one tie height underneath. That's it, if you needed to do that. And you would do that if you were going to run fast trains around this a lot. Or, if for some reason you tended to uh, derail here, you could possibly use a little bit of elevation, just like that, one tie, and you'd probably be good to go. That's how easy it is to do flex track. Uh, you will need your rail nippers. 
and push pins and a magnet holder for them. Pin them in. Pin your track work in before you start nailing it down. Now, if you're going to glue your track work down, can't help you. I don't do that. I don't do that because I tend to rebuild my track on a frequent basis. I like to rebuild it and change it as I operate to find out which way is better. All right, so that's take, that should take care of flex track. Just to change gears, now we got to get back to working on some locomotives.